Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today I'm joined by Ray from VMware. Thanks for joining. Thank you for inviting me, Matt. So tell us about VMware, what do you do? Yeah, so VMware is a global company uh, delivering cloud computing and virtualization solutions for you know, compute, storage, networking, and security. Great, so VMware and AWS have partnered to put together VMware Cloud and AWS, is that right? We have, so we've partnered uh, closely with AWS to deliver a, a solution for hybrid cloud called VMware Cloud mm -hmm. on AWS that leverages the consistency and compatibility of VMware software along with the global scale and reach of the AWS cloud. So let's, today we're going to focus a little bit on the structure and how the customer owned account interacts with the VMware account, is that right? Yeah, so you know, as part of building the service, you know, we leverage uh, a number of AWS components. We obviously talked about uh, you know, I3 Metal and yeah. the bare metal uh, uh, hardware. Uh, and you know, one of the cool things uh, about I3 Metal is that it's a fully featured EC2 instance. So mm -hmm. by extension, you know, we're also utilizing EBS for block storage and VPC networking uh, via the Elastic Network Adapter for network connectivity. Uh, we also, as part of the service, you know, use uh, S3 both to hot you know, an internal VMware bucket to host uh, build uh, bundles and artifacts and customer buckets for things like backups. Uh, we use uh, uh, Direct Connect to connect to, to on-premises uh, as an option uh, uh, to augment VPN. Mm -hmm. And we also, uh, as part of the account connection process, to, to touch on your point, leverage services like uh, uh, cloud formation, identity and access management, and Lambda. So yeah, let's dig into that. So say I'm yeah. a new user and I want to provision a new VMware Cloud and AWS account. Uh, yeah. What happens? Because in this kind of split setup where we have a VMware on the account and a customer account, we have to establish connectivity and probably some security policies. So how does that actually yeah. you know, walk us through? Exactly, let's dive a bit deeper into that. So you know, the first thing is the customer will log in to the VMware Cloud and AWS console. Yeah. So you know, this is a web service. It's like a SaaS offering. I exactly. Okay. Uh, and actually, you know, as part of provisioning their SDDC, which as you mentioned, happens in their own dedicated uh, VMware SDDC account, yeah. uh, there's actually an account connection process. Okay. And what we do is we actually generate in VMware Cloud and AWS a cloud formation template that the customer will run inside their own account. Okay. Right? And what this cloud formation template does is it leverages uh, an AWS managed policy uh, to actually grant two uh, IAM roles, two, uh, two cross-account roles to the VMware SDDC account. And these roles are very specific. As I mentioned, it's an AWS managed policy, and it allows the VMware uh, SDDC to basically describe the VPC, VPC subnet, and route table, and actually create and manage ENIs and route tables. That's great. So by using cross-count roles and also by using CloudFormation, it really allows the customer to see exactly what they're granting you access exactly, to. Exactly, yeah. We give them full visibility into the operations that the VMware Cloud and AWS is performing on their behalf. It's great transparency and, and good yeah. security. So that's the cross-count roles. I understand it to is. sort of see the VPC, but what actually needs to happen? What does the yeah. VMware environment yeah, do what inside happens the customer? Is, so account? once we've granted those roles, we actually leverage uh, Lambda yeah. to communicate back to the VMware Cloud and AWS console. Mm -hmm. And then we actually go ahead and provision the customer's SDDC in the VMware SDDC account. And in this case, that would mean multiple EC2 exactly. so bare metal instances. Here we provision multiple bare metal instances based on the number of hosts they've selected yeah. and the full VMware software stack, you know, uh, vCenter server, vSAN, NSX, in a prescriptive architecture for the customer, fully provisioned in an automated fashion. Okay, so that's great. We have the provisioning down, but you still need connectivity if yeah. you're going to actually, you know, use this. So how exactly. does that work? So you know, I mentioned that we provision our software stack, and that actually includes NSX. So we provision an NSX gateway. Okay. We actually provision one for management and compute workloads, and this provides connectivity, you know, to external networks, you know, internet or. Um, or on-prem. So would this be what is leveraged if, for example, I'm, you know, it's also communicating with an on-premises VMware environment? Exactly, so okay. that's how we would connect to external resources or the on-prem environment. Got it. And going back to the account connection process and those, uh, the roles that we grant, um, you know, we, we, connect, we create one ENI per ESX host in the customer's account and actually attach them to the bare metal i3 instances. So why do you use this multiple ENI model? Yeah, and we actually create one additional ENI for the gateway. And that's to support the fact that this gateway is a virtual appliance that could actually move 
between different uh, I3 metal or ESX hosts. Got it. And by using this model, I guess, it, it allows for sort of lower latency, higher throughput. And yeah, what happens, let me actually describe how this works. So now that we have ENIs from the customer's account presented directly to our, our ESX hosts, yeah. we also manage and update routing tables. Okay. So here, in the customer's uh, VMware SDDC account, you know, we create a route to reach the VPC subnet of the ENIs. Over here, in the customer's account, we update the route table, again, using those very prescriptive uh, roles that we talked about for any logical networks that exist in the customer's environment. And that's because any networks you create in VMware Cloud on AWS. Those are logical networks. Exactly. These connect to the NSX gateway. So now what happens you know, is that when workloads within that are VMs that are running uh, in your VMware Cloud and AWS environment want to communicate with resources in the customer's native AWS account, yeah. they use this high bandwidth, low latency ENI connection. So, and this is really exciting. It allows customers to access native services, as I said, at high performance. Mm -hmm. So these could be EC2 instances, S3 buckets, yeah, or see, services yeah, like Redshift, yeah. exactly. Yeah. In addition, you know, it, then other use cases here could be accessing partner services like uh, uh, backups and storage, or even you know, uh, modernizing some of their applications. And we think this is a really you know, interesting and, and differentiated solution, because now hybrid is extending not just from uh, public cloud to on-premises, but between the VMware environment and the native AWS services. Yeah, because presumably with this architecture, if you appeared with an on-premises environment, those resources could also communicate out to, for example, Redshift. Absolutely, right? yes. That's great. So you have, I love how you have this model with multiple ENIs to, like you said, low latency, high throughput workloads. If you have a really big Redshift data warehouse, for example, you're going to need that. Right. And it's really neat how you've sort of connected a VMware-owned account and powerful I3 instances running in there with resources in the customer account. It's a very great architecture. So thanks for sharing it with us okay. today. Okay, yeah, thank you, Matt. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture. <laughs>